Hi there and welcome to this James the Bike Guy. Today we're talking about my TriFox MFM 100. This is a mountain bike that's been provided to me by TriFox that I've built up with my own parts to basically test out what it's like to get a direct-to-consumer Chinese mountain bike. Well before this intro gets any longer I'll let you know the bike didn't turn out quite the way I expected so it's worth watching till the end as well as this is a little more long form than a lot of my videos. So I'm gonna have timestamps down in the description below so that way you can skip ahead to whatever you'd like to take a look at. Well anyways, let's get into talking about what this TriFox MFM 100 is all about. So of course we've got the TriFox frame which I got in the 19 inch size. I've built it up using Shimano's Deor M6100 rear derailleur. This is the one by specific rear derailleur for 12 speed. And this is running through micro spline free hub body that's mounted up with a 10 to 51 tooth Deor 12 speed cassette. As we go forward, we've got the Deor crank set here. This I've got set up with a 30 tooth chain ring and the 30 tooth chain ring with that 51 tooth out back is more than enough gearing to climb, well, just about anything. Running through for suspension, we've got a Fox Float DPS. This is 165 by 52 and a half stroke. So that's giving this 115 millimeters of suspension travel out back. And up front, we've got the Marzocchi Bomber Z2. This is a 34 millimeter stanchion fork with the rail damper uh, which is more or less a open bath grip damper. So this is very similar to Fox Rhythm 34, so 34 stanchion, similar build. Uh, it's been pretty nice. It's not the lightest fork out there, but plenty stiff. Going into the cockpit, we of course got the Deor 12 speed shifter working out pretty well. MT-401 brakes. These are twin piston hydraulic calipers. Race face AFEC 35 bar with a really beautiful Industry 9 A35 stem. This is so beautiful, machined in uh, Asheville, North Carolina. Really gorgeous piece, paired up with an integrated Cane Creek headset. So we've got a very nice headset inside of this frame. The shifting as well as the dropper posts are routed through SP41 uh, housing. So that's about the highest quality Shimano housing you can get. Makes a big difference, it's worth doing. I've got a Bontrager lever. Uh, I like the way these feel, and it's operating a race face affect dropper post. Dropper I've got is uh, 125 millimeter drop. Because I didn't have anything around other than this, I've got a Bontrager Verse saddle, uh, which I was a little nervous how it would feel. Actually, pretty nice. For grips, I've got some lock-ons from Specialized. These puppies feel pretty nice. And then of course, getting down to the ground, it's gonna be a set of Industry 9 Trail S wheels. These Trail S wheels, 27 millimeter internal width, 29ers of course, they're running the one-to-one -one hubs. So it's got really fast engagement, 90 points of engagement, feels so nice out on the trail. And for a front tire, I've got something new. I haven't run this before. And personally, I'm kind of in love with this tire. So this is the Eliminator Control tire runs super nice it's from specialized it's 29 by 2.3 and then for the rear tire i've got another specialized tire but this is the ground control so this is a ground control in the control casing 2.3 as well uh works really nice one strange thing to mention this bike is supposed to fit 2.35s this is just a 2.3 uh, but tire clearance is snug snug's uh, about as generous as i can say may have been better running a 2.1 uh, but otherwise the spec is pretty dang nice uh, for this bike all right so we're back in the car had a great ride put on 10 miles with my friend and got a chance to to really get a good first impression on uh, the trifox so where i went foxboro has some some pretty good varied terrain so there was some real real chunder there uh, there were some pretty long climbs that we got to do uh, some great descents there, and then there was a lot of fire road kind of cross-country action. So it gave me a good chance to feel out 
uh, just just how the bike did overall. And for the most part, I think I like it. There, there are a few things that uh, are a little questionable that I want to check out when I get back home, make some adjustments. But overall, I like it. So before I get a chance to process uh, all of my thoughts, let me tell you where I am. So riding it, uh, some of the strong suits was uh, right. on kind of more flowy sections. I felt like the bike was really well planted. I felt pretty confident descending on the bike uh, as long as it wasn't too rough. So it descends surprisingly well. Um, then as you begin to go uphill here, it gets up. It's not as efficient as some of the other bikes I've ridden, but it gets the job done. The pedaling efficiency was pretty good. I think there's a little too much free play in the first beginning third of the suspension travel. And that's not uncommon because it is sort of over shock. They give you a, a wide range of shocks that you can run on it. And oftentimes the longer the stroke that can happen. And I think I can solve that with a little suspension tuning, but, but we'll see. Um, overall, I never felt like it bottomed out, which was pretty impressive. I had sag set up uh, to about 25%. And for a bike with only 115 mils of travel, I never felt like uh, like I was overdoing what the suspension could handle. So that that was pretty positive. Um, the the one challenge uh, I guess I get into is it felt not as stable in some of the chunky stuff as I would have liked. And I think my my hunch, and this is what I want to check, my thought is is that's due to bottom bracket height. So what I mean is like I was going into uh, some more technical stuff. I was going in, uh, you know, the bike's got 120 mils of travel up front, which is plenty of suspension travel. Um, but it felt like it was kind of a little uneasy. And what I think is the case, that twitchiness or that uneasiness of the bike, what I think is the case about it is because it's got 120 and 115 out back, and the bike can do anything from whatever it is, like 90 to 120 mils of travel, I bet you my bottom bracket height is just super high. And the reason I come to that, that conclusion is because when I got back, in New England trails, you almost always smash the pedals. Uh, you know, they go up against stuff, your crank arms get, you know, scratched up, things like that. But when, when I got back, it looked like I didn't have any pedal strikes at all. And I know for darn sure I'm not a good enough rider for it to have been a, a rider solution. So I think the bike has a fairly high bottom bracket, which puts it at a disadvantage when you start adding suspension. The other thing about the, the geometry was uh, I had to size up to the 19 because uh, the 17 inch frame, which I would often buy on other bikes, was way too low in the front end. So the bike has a relatively low stack and relatively long reach. Uh, and what that equates for uh, is a more aggressive position. Um, but, but as a rider myself, I need a little bit taller stack on my bike. The reach wasn't a problem. And so the way I got it set up is a slightly shorter, shorter stem from Industry 9. And shortening up the front end, I still felt a little hunched over. Compared to my fuel, uh, the bike is definitely a lot lower in the front end. And so what ended up happening was, depending on where I was going, if it was like a aggressive descent, so not a nice flowy one, uh, I felt a bit pitched over the front end. And so, you know, I don't know what the solution is. Maybe, maybe a riser bar would help. Uh, I have a hunch that if I drop the travel in the rear of the bike, the bike would light up and, and feel a bit better, but I'm not totally sure. Um, the, the real benefits are when I was riding, it was quiet the whole time. Uh, you know, I was sort of expecting it to rattle with the, with the internal cable routing, but that felt good. Uh, you know, no nope. riding it, I, I couldn't tell that it was a uh, off brand, which was kind of, kind of impressive and it, it felt pretty good on the trail. Um, you know, in, in any of the smoother stuff, any of the XC stuff, any of the light trail, it really felt good. It's where, when it got super aggressive, the bike began to fall apart a little bit. And I think that's because 
you know, when, when TriFox says that it can do this super wide range of suspension, you can't optimize uh, the suspension design and the angles all to be perfect for the wide range, especially since it doesn't have a flip chip. But when I get home, I'm definitely gonna check out a couple of things. The, the first thing is, I think that I'm gonna find that the bottom bracket height is pretty tall. Uh, so I'll measure that, see what that looks like. I wanna check out the head tube angle. Uh, I'm curious what it came out to, cause you know, I don't know on their spec sheet what, uh, you know, what suspension travel they have when they claim the angles they do. So I'm curious what that is with the 120 up front and 115 and back. And then the last thing is, I wanna see if I can tune the air volume in the air canister, uh, remove a spacer if there's one in there, which will allow when I set sag, I can increase the air pressure just a little bit. Um, you know, it won't have quite the ramp to the end of the suspension travel when I take a spacer out. Um, but what I'm, I'm expecting to find, because I didn't have any bottoming out issues, is that if I pull that out, I can tone down some of that initial bump sensitivity, which seemed just a bit too active, not, uh, not ruin the top end, because the bike seemed to handle that. It seems pretty progressive as it goes through, and might end up with a little bit nicer setup. If I take it out and I ride and it doesn't feel dialed even after doing that, the next choice would be potentially travel reducing the rear shock uh, and that could help it out. But really, um, you know, for the first ride on a bike that was kind of an unknown quantity, I'm pretty happy with it. You know, it's, it's not dialed in as the best bike I've ever ridden yet, uh, but I think there's some dialing and some adjusting and that's kind of what you get when you get a bike uh, from, from an overseas brand is you got to do the work yourself. You know, part of what you pay for with a, with a fully built bike is that you know some suspension engineer some you know product manager they work together to get the spec just right and in this case uh, we're going at it a little bit blind but overall uh, it was a pretty good ride and i'm curious to see uh, what i find out checking it back at the house so having done a few rides on this bike now and you guys have already seen my first impressions of it um, my initial thought with the bike was that uh, it felt really good in a lot of situations, but it kind of fell apart when it got just a, either a little too techy or you know something started to unsettle the bike. And my theory was that the bottom bracket height uh, is a bit too tall, and I think that's because they just give you too much range in what suspension you can theoretically use. So uh, what I'm gonna do is, uh, is of course test out that theory, get it measured up to, to see the case. But remember, we're running basically 115 in the rear and 120 up front. And it's in my theory, at least, that I was hoping that this bike would feel kind of like the, uh, uh, the Santa Cruz blur trail that I had uh, last year. So looking at the geometry sheet uh, that's just down next to me, the blur trail was 33.2 uh, millimeters of bottom bracket height. So that's height from the center of the bottom bracket all the way down to the ground. And so what we'll do is we'll measure that out here and you'll see that this is 34 and a half uh, centimeters. So that's actually a pretty significant uh, increase. So that's a little over, uh, uh, over one centimeter of additional height for the bottom bracket. The next thing that I'm curious about is gonna be our effective seat tube angle. I'm gonna use this, this level and then we're gonna grab a protractor app on the phone. That way we can, uh, can get this measured out. But so what we're gonna be going from is basically right through the center of the bottom bracket and right through the center. And we're coming up to about 78.2-ish. And the blur was uh, a seat tube angle of 73. So this is, uh, is quite a bit steeper than what that blur was. And then we can go to the head tube angle here. So the blur was 68 and a half, and this bike we're looking at 67.2. So basically what we're seeing is bottom bracket height is higher than the blur. The head tube angle is steeper than the blur. And then the seat tube angle is quite a bit slacker. And I think that's all going together to get the little bit of a weird geometry uh, that this bike is doing. And 
you know, if we were to take this back, so about half a degree for every 10 millimeters. So if you were to drop this back down to 100 millimeters of suspension travel, which is probably what this bike was designed around, you would get that head tube angle to be right at 68.2 if it's 67.2 now. And that would fall in line with what you would have on that blur. Same thing with the bottom bracket height. If we drop the front by 20, the back by 15, that would be roughly, you know, 1.8-ish uh, centimeter drop at the bottom bracket height. And that would bring us in to the same realm as what that blur was. Before we talk about what I'm gonna do to get the uh, suspension to feel a little bit better on that TriFox the way that I've got it set up now, I wanna show you our control. So this is my Fuel EX7. I'm sure a few people down in the comments are gonna go, well, James, you didn't measure it, you know, sagged out, or it's gonna measure differently when you're riding it. Well, yeah, I didn't measure it sagged out, but uh, spec sheets are never measured sagged out. So here we've got my Fuel EX7, which is running, uh, you know, stock lengths for suspension. I mean, some things have been changed, but nothing that would change the geometry. Stock tires, stock wheels, all that, uh, all that stuff. And if we check bottom bracket height here, this should come out to 34. So we'll take my uh, tape measure, measure it to the ground, measures out perfectly at 34 uh, centimeters. And to put that in perspective, that means a bike, this is 140 up front, 130 in the rear. This bike has a lower bottom bracket height than the TriFox does, even though it's got 20 more millimeters of suspension travel up front and 15 more in the rear. This bike should come out with a 66 degree head tube angle. And we'll put our tool right on here. And it's measuring out 66.1. So, I mean, that's pretty dang close. So there might be a little margin for error, uh, but I think my math is right that, you know, the TriFox bike really should have been set up uh, in their spec sheets as saying just for 100 millimeters of travel up front. Um, and I think that would bring everything in line where it would have performed exactly the way I expected. To get the bike to feel a little bit better than it is right now, I think what we wanna do is increase the initial resistance because as I told you guys in the car coming from the first ride, uh, it feels just a little less efficient than I expected, but I didn't have any bottom out, uh, bottom out issues. So what I wanna do is I wanna see if in the shock there's any air volume spacers because if there is, I should be able to take that out and that's gonna allow me to run the same amount of sag uh, but the effective air pressure will be a little bit higher at the beginning without getting higher uh, at the end. So what we'll do, just let all the air out. Shock comes right out. And then now, huh. Well, that's too bad. So you can see right in there, I don't have any air volume spacers I could take out. So I think the real trick here is to get this shock rebuilt and done in such a way that uh, it goes back together with, a, with 100 millimeters of travel. So with the shock back in, I think our uh, only real choice at this point is to uh, just increase the air pressure a little bit, take away a little sag. That should help with some of the pedaling efficiency. It's not gonna solve the bottom bracket height. And uh, really, you know, the next time that I go to overhaul the shock, basically what I wanna do is just change out the air spring to be able to set this up with 100 millimeters of travel and back. So we're back to the trail with the uh, TriFox here. It's a brisk morning. Uh, but that's okay, because we should have uh, have some fun with this. We're at uh, Hodges Village Dam, which is a little more tame, a little more cross-country style. And uh, and that should make for a nice place to ride with this. There we go.
All right, time to uh, test out my confidence on this bike. Let's jump into here. I have no doubt that that doesn't look too bad. Uh, but it is sketchy when you're on there. And even though at times this doesn't feel perfect, it's plenty confident to be able to do that stuff. It's time to talk about what do I think about this Trifox? So I, I've had it out for a bunch of miles now you got to see my first impressions. I really wanted to do Going that, you know, descent. without giving it a chance to uh, to really percolate and think about it. Uh, it we've looked nice. at the geometry and I've put some more miles on it and we've just gone for this ride today. And really what I think it boils down to is yeah, in the current form, the way I have it built up is pretty dang good about 80, 85% right. of the time that I'm riding. Back uphill. And what I mean is, you know, faster flowy stuff, <laughs> the bike feels really nice. Uh, I think climbing, oh, yeah. you know, it's got a little bit of initial bob and it seems like once the bike kind of compresses through that or you really get it loaded up, it tends to ride pretty well after that. Um, it handles uh, pretty quick. The, uh, the steering response, the handling is, is quite quick considering how slack that head tube angle is in current form. But again, that comes to the bottom bracket height. That's changing kind of the speed and how it rides. Now. When we talk about that remaining 15 or 20% of the time, I think this is really where you get the difference between a bike that's pre-built by a manufacturer, has some R&D, all that kind of stuff done, and uh, you know a, a product manager puts together the part spec. And that's because I, I think if we go back and instead of running it as long travel and down country as it is right now, if it was 100 millimeters of travel, I think I'd have a bit more confidence in the bike. But as it is, if you're descending really hard and uh, you know, you're going down and the bike gets upset, I think because of that super steep seat tube angle and then at the same time, high bottom bracket height, the bike basically just gets unsettled faster than you would expect. And this might be the kind of thing that if you've never had experience on you know, a, uh, a totally holistically put together bike. Right, you know, last year I was riding a uh, blur that was just really well dialed. I, I think just you probably wouldn't notice it, um, but it was really revealing when we looked at it and that BB height is so high, especially compared to longer travel fuel. So a as it is, I think this bike would be a lot more fun if you built it up with 100 mils of travel up front, 100 mils of travel in back, sent it, uh, I'm pretty sure you'd have a good time. As it is right now in the 120, it's not totally All dialed. Right. And that's where I think a little more fine tuning, possibly I'm going to suspension reduce 100 millimeters of travel. That can be done uh, at your local bike shop, just a new air shaft. I bet you that'll drop it down and it'll start to feel super good. And if that's the case, I might do the same thing to the fork. Uh, well, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. I know it was a long video. Uh, this has been an interesting build. You know, I have to thank uh, TriFox did provide this bike for me uh, to give it a shot and, and see what I thought. You know, Wheels Manufacturing provided me the bottom bracket, which was super nice of them. They, they were super helpful with it. And then uh, the rest of the build was all on my own. So none of this uh, other stuff came from anyone. So it's nice to have a pretty pure experience uh, building up a bike that I probably otherwise would have never done. So let me know down in the comment section below, uh, would you buy this frame, build it up yourself? How would you? Would, what would you change on mine? Take any of my advice or you say, ah, oh, to heck with it. Otherwise, would you rather get a bike pre-built straight from a manufacturer? Curious what your thoughts are, as well as if you enjoy parts reviews, weights, all those kind of fun things, go ahead, hit that subscribe button so you can see more videos in the future. And definitely drop a thumbs up. It lets me know you enjoyed the video. But uh, for now, I got to take this thing for a ride and you guys got to get out on your own bike.